two tests that we're going to run through. Specifically, we're going to touch on uh, high definition optics, HDO, um, which consists of two patented technologies for us. One is XYZ optics, how we're correcting for shapes inside your eyewear curvature. Okay. Um, and then the camera test here is looking at the lens material, what we call plutonite. So it's our polycarbonate proprietary, um, but we're going to show you the clarity aspects of it. Okay. Um, and then back behind this, which will be the second half of testing, is all your impact stuff. Cool. Okay, so high velocity on the right hand side. <laughs> you got the dummy head. The dummy yeah. It's on both. So that one's Poor very guy. similar to what you'll probably find yourself. Small objects traveling high rate of speed, so steel ricocheting back at you. Yeah. Small object traveling fast. It's, it's going to be at point blank range. Um, we're going to shoot at glass, and then we'll switch over and shoot at a radar lock. High mass over here is a little different. You're looking at about a one pound spike being dropped from four feet high <laughs> onto a pair of plastic sunglasses. And this is just gravity. That's just yeah, gravity. Yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> um, but you can see the actual spike we're going to be dropping. That's your, oh, cool. that's your spike right there. Yeah, can I pick this yeah, up? Well, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Yeah, so you, <laughs> yeah that's got some, that's got some heft to it. Yeah, so that four foot drop is, is pretty devastating to it. So larger objects, more weight behind it, not, not as fast. But yeah. we'll leave that to second half. Cool. We're going to start here, so it doesn't matter what side of the room you're on, all I need is just a path right there at that block. You're going to notice a couple lasers pop on here in a second. Um, again, this test is looking at how shapes affect light as it passes through. So you notice I have two lasers here. Okay, yep. Okay, they are slowly converging to meet oh, up in the spot. on that, yeah, on that yeah. panel of it, okay. So all this is really doing is replicating our eyes as we focus on something in this. And so essentially in here, sidearm target shooting, right? about proper proper distance, right around that range. So this is us looking or focusing on that target. So the whole goal here is essentially to keep these lasers right where they're at. No refraction, if you will, as it okay. passes through. I'm gonna start with some competition eyewear here first, just basically showing you the issues of what happens with curvature, okay? Um, so again, companies add this in there for aesthetics, coverage, protection. There's a lot of reasons why there's shapes in our eyewear, but this is the physics issue that happens when you actually put curves in eyewear, yeah, that laser, those lights start to bend and break on us. Interesting, okay. yeah, you can see the two dots exactly. on that front panel. Huh. And essentially what's happening here is light as it's passing through your lens is simply breaking, it's bending, it's following the shape of your sunglasses. And this is again is a pair of just regular yeah. just, I just went in, yeah. glasses. Uh, this is a, a fairly well known brand in the oh. industry, action sports wise. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, this is happening in every single pair of competition eyewear out there. Now they do happen to want to make corrections, but it's much more than just a lens correction. It's also frame with that. So a lot of it's design, geometry, science, and angles. Um, but light's just following curves. Now why this is so bad for you? You have to make this correction. Okay. Are you okay being... Yeah, yeah okay, absolutely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so essentially what's happening internally is our mind is processing this instantly. We know what's, what's taking place. Okay. okay? Brain's going to tell the muscles in our eyes to make a correction. And that's why we don't see two images when we pop on our eyewear. Okay? It's being corrected for us. It's being put into one. So same thing. Muscles are correcting it. They're basically flexing repeatedly over and over again to bend light back onto the retina. So short-term issues, headaches and eye fatigue. Yeah. Because okay, yeah, we're... Yeah, yeah, we're having to correct system everything. system processing, right? Long-term damage, muscle deterioration. Okay, mm. this is one of the only muscles in the body that will actually get weaker over time. It doesn't <laughs> rebuild themselves. So when you have all that strain taking place every day while wearing eyewear, as long as you're outside shooting, right, or just indoor shooting wearing that safety eyewear, your muscles are having to make that correction. Yeah, that's so interesting. So a couple yeah. years down the road, you may start seeing that vision to start to deteriorate on you. This is how you make your money, right? This is how we do everything in life. You start losing this, we now have to start relying upon contacts or prescriptions. Not the end of the world, but again, in, in competition performance, that's one extra thing you have to rely upon. Yeah. They could dry out, contacts or, or prescriptions can be heavy depending on the size of that prescription. Just don't want to have to deal with it, right? So this is the issue with it. I'm going to show you one problem here that, that, that companies run into. Again, we all know we have a physics issue. All these companies are going and correcting for it, okay? This doesn't look too bad. Okay, but I'm going to show you why the main issue, what, what the main issue is for us, and you can follow me down if you want to, right. but as you follow these lasers, okay, they just crossed over. This is a depth perception problem. Okay. okay your target's still here, right? right. You've got, you got two dots. You've got two dots still, which is what you didn't want, but it's not as bad as the first one, yeah. but where you find out where these dots really do still connect at, we're about 
six to eight inches in front of our target, which isn't too bad here at 15 feet. Yeah. But say we're doing some, some long range shooting, 100 more yards or so, this discrepancy grows with that distance. Yeah, look at that. So now you start seeing, hey, where I can be off by a couple feet in just that elevation gain based off of the actual issue coming out of your eyewear. And then just going back in again, we have to make corrections for light crossing over on us. So eyes crossing the problem, <laughs> pulling to the side, different equation. Yeah, yeah. That's where the strain comes into as well. So these are some issues that are found in eyewear. And a lot of it, again, is just the design and geometry. Um, they're not trying to sell you a bad product. But I'm going to now switch over and show you Oakley Radar Lock. So that's the Oakley difference. So this is Oakley technology, specifically what we call XYZ Optics. So we're the only company that will be able to possess this type of technology. Um, basically what you're looking at, and you can follow it all the way down, yeah. So, I mean, so right, we've, yeah, it's, so I've got two dots here, mm -hmm. but and then. If you follow to the target, you'll notice that they stay right on cue and, and hit right where it needs to, right at your focal point. No depth perception issues, no distortions. Again, this is done through lens geometry, but also by frame design. I mean, help. Mm -hmm. So help me understand though, because I mean this is a fixed distance yeah. of whatever, and so you know, right? Depending on the distance of the target, though, I mean it's sort of like are are these lenses like op, like z sort of zeroed in for? No, no, there's no zeroing in. It, it doesn't matter what the distance is. Okay, okay. The distance whether it's at 15 feet or here, or actually at the 35 feet that Anzi's specific to. Mm -hmm. That's when you'll see that when we get in the R and D lab. Distance doesn't make a difference. Specifically here, the reason being, so at 15 feet, it's here. So if we were to basically move that block back, what would happen? We would still make it there. We would still perfectly be dialed in. Essentially the reason being is this test is slightly modified and you'll see the real one. So the real actual ANSI test consists of one laser. Okay. You look through a scope and you'll see the, the refraction of light. You do one lens, you look through the left. Okay. We don't have time to have all those people come through and look through the laser at one time. So we bring both of them in together. So essentially instead of seeing one lens, you're seeing it happen twice essentially. So again, 35 feet, 25 feet, 15 feet, 100, however far, this dot, our lasers will never bend or break as it passes through the lens. And just to show you that, I'll move the eyewear around everywhere, up, down, left, right, and you'll oh, notice yeah. that the dot's not mm -hmm. moving on the uh, nope. far side. Nope. Everything stays together. Hmm. Wow. And that's Oakley technology. That's X, Y, Z. That's X, Y, Z. That's, that's cool. It's, it's the X, just yeah, X so, axis, y axis, so essentially what we've done to make this correction is, is again, it's a lot of it's lens geometry, but frame does play into it. But what we've done is every single Oakley lens has a thicker optical center. Okay. From that part of the lens, we're going to horizontally and then vertically tape your lens. So we go from thick to thin, okay? Light is naturally going to be attracted towards that thicker, denser object. So essentially as light wants to pass through your lens and wants to follow the curve, that thicker optical center, X, Y, Z, is pulling it back to optical center so it's suiting your eyes straight on. Hmm. So again, it doesn't matter what distance we go to, okay? Boom, we're set. We, we, we will not have any distortion issues coming in your Oakley eyewear. And again, to prove it's a geometry issue, if we have our geometries, our, our frame dimensions off, okay, we can start messing up optics. Mm -hmm. So we go through design here, it looks great, aesthetics are cool, optics are awesome, but you know what? In impact testing, it's not quite safe, it's a little too flat, so we get too much too much of that force going straight into it. Well, let's go ahead and give a little bit more wrap. We change the angle of the pair of sunglasses. We have to now come back and, and work with the geometries on the frame for optics wise. Any questions on X, Y, Z before I show you the other half to it? No, that's really cool. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's, I don't think this is something that your average consumer no. thinks about. Maybe military law enforcement just because they're, you know, it's, it, but. No, no, no. The, the cops, I, you know, I've given away. Can't tell you how many pairs of sunglasses I've given away. I used to take the train. And the guy had five dollar crappy glasses. I'm like, hey, like, <laughs> you know, one, you can get a deal on two. It's yeah, like, you know, you're just you're in a line of work that we need you to be a little mm -hmm. more cute for this stuff. So, um, I think there's some things like your eyes adjust 25 times a second. Is that what? It is? No, it's actually a couple hundred times a second. Yeah, wow. To actually make that adjustment. So yeah, yeah, I mean, you're just talking about you know your eyes constantly being worn and strained. Mm -hmm. uh, and so. You know, I've had free sunglasses forever being part of the sports industry, you know. And you take them and you put them on and you're like, cool, you know, and my wife's wearing, you know, whatever brand. And, you know, you're always appreciative of it. But until I started working here, like you just said, until you know, 
You don't know. You don't know. And, and, and people, and it's not for their own not knowing. It's not their fault. It's just no one really ever cared to put too much emphasis into actually, well, what am I wearing outside of? It looks good and it keeps light out of my eyes. Right. Yeah, I think that's... People are out there. Yep. But those side effects, headaches and eye fatigue, they, they may not know what to actually attribute it to. It, it could just be the eyewear. Mm-hmm. You know, again, you're, you've been outside at a beach or just outside training and shooting all day. Those eyes are, are strained, okay? Man, it's just, oh, I've been shooting. No, you've been looking through eyewear all day. That could yeah. possibly be bad. Yeah, I think a lot of people, because I've, yeah, worn glasses. Where, yeah, my eyes get tired, and I just sort of chalk it up to, well, maybe I didn't sleep enough, mm-hmm. or I don't know, I've just been out all day long. I don't really mm-hmm. think that my eyewear could be a potential could, problem. No, I mean, I literally use our, you know, I know I need my eyes checked again. I had this mm-hmm. a while ago, but I'll use my prism black jackets to help me see signs and stuff, even at night, you know, like I'll put them down just because I know it's helping me correct my eyes. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it's, it's pretty telling. You know? Yeah. And this next one here that we're going to show you too, I'll actually, I'll show you how, and the, one of the main reasons why people don't understand this is because you don't necessarily, you're not seeing these issues like I can show you here on, on these machines. Right. You know, so that's another side. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the issues and then pop it on the screen and show you okay. the clarity side to it. But this next hair test we're going to look at is now focusing on lens material. Okay. okay. Um, first one was shapes. Now looking at material. The image you have on the TV screen right now is, is a static image that's loaded in this part of my system. Okay. Ah, okay. So anything I put in so, front of the camera. Got it. Yeah, we're seeing it up on the screen right there. there. Okay. Right. Let me switch over here. Yeah, no worries. So essentially what we need to pass this test, and I'm going to go ahead and take just a little light out of the system. Okay. So out of all these lines we see here, 20 lines of resolution, so okay. those three lines as well as those three lines, that's what's known as 20 lines of resolution. Okay. We need to see that with contrast. So if we can see it exactly how it is now, great. But as long as you can pick up a little bit of white between black, that's a passing score. Okay. okay. So this is minimum. Maximum score is going to be 40 lines of resolution. And that's okay. a maximum score because the eyes just can't see any further with detail. Okay. So that's as far as your eyes can really pick up detail with. All right. So we can get this image to stay as clear as possible, even better, but all we need is a little bit of contrast at 20 lines. Fairly simple. Okay. Um, I'm going to show a couple different lens materials. Um, I'm going to stick to, actually what I'll do is I'll stick to glass. Um, as I've seen people on, on target ranges wearing glass aviators before. And then I'll go ahead and show a couple polycarbonates just to show you the different range. Um, first one I'll do is glass. Okay, why glass? One, it's, it's optically pure. Okay. Microscopes, telescopes use glass. Um, but due to certain ways they manufacture that lens, um, actually, I'm going to do this first. Try it on for me okay. real quick, bud. Take a look at the screen. Does the image change? Looks the same for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. When I, yeah. T- yeah. Yep. Looks That's the same. Yep. Mm-hmm. So this is technically what you just looked through. Oh, jeez. Did it look like that when you put on the sunglasses? No. no. Nah. So that's the brain and the eyes in action instantly for you, right? Huh. You cleared up all that clarity. Yeah. Okay. That's and fascinating. Brains telling muscles to make that correction. So again, this is one of the reasons why people just don't understand eyewear. They don't notice this or notice the headaches and eye fatigue yeah. that come from this, right? But at no point do I get clarity. So there's a lot of strain taking place. Okay. Yeah. So you're turning an adjustment knob, so like basically a focus. It's a focus. Yeah. It's uh-huh. replicating the eye's ability to correct for resolution and distortion issues. And our eyes and brain can handle a certain amount of distortion with ease. Outside of a certain measurement, they call six hundredths of a diopter. Mm-hmm. They're saying outside of that, there's too much strain developing on this system for us to say, hey, it's a good lens. So if I can clear it up within that range, we got a passing lens. But unfortunately, I don't. So this yeah, is what happens. Blurry. Exactly. And the reason why we're seeing this is glass lacks inherent UV safety. Okay. Okay. I mentioned earlier we don't have to test this. But two things you do have to test to. One is UV safety. The other is a very simple drop ball test that even glass can pass. Okay. Glass is failing here because they have to take multiple glass lenses and sandwich around a polarized filter. That polarized filter is going to help give you that UV radiation protection. It's the only way glass can be sold on in the market. But with that sandwiching comes potential optical distortions with it. So glass, still nice, not very safe, yeah. but optics can be destroyed through a layering process. I'm going to take that off now and I'm going to go ahead and introduce a polycarbonate lens for okay. you. Okay. So here's your, here's your PC, here's your poly, there's your polycarbonate. Yeah, also really blurry. Really blurry, image is shifted off the screen which is more here. But, again, you can see that we have distortion inside eyewear. Yeah. Okay. 
with no no clarity being able to correct it out of the uh, the image shift is also an interesting mm -hmm. observation. Yeah, it's not just getting blurry, but mm -hmm. yeah, just the whole target or the whole picture just yeah. shifts. So the reason why you're seeing this polycarbonate is it's a very tough plastic to manufacture with for three main reasons. One, um, there's a very there's a lot of heat involved in the process, mm -hmm. and if you're not careful with that heat and have too much you're going to burn it and you can develop carbon deposits inside. So little tiny black specks, if you will. The other aspect is moisture. Okay, We're taking something that's room temperature and then putting it into a, a dry chamber at 250 degrees and then into a compression chamber at 550 for complete melting. Okay, Condensation can develop in that dry chamber mm. if we're not careful. Condensation inside actual lens will ruin optics as well as add an impact safety issue, being that air bubbles can cause a weakness. Yeah. Lens, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last one is, is dust. Okay, Dust in the machine, again, is just going to clog up the machine as well as add little tiny specks of dust in the actual material itself. Again, all of which we have to process and correct for. So, again, those are some of the issues that we find competition-wise. I'm going to switch over real quick and show you Oakley piece. So here's that radar lock we showed you from the first one. I'm going to pop this on here. And there's your correction for you. Just yeah. light into the system, meaning it's a little Brilliant. bit of lens. See, so there are the glasses, and then if my camera, there we go. Yeah, there you go. perfect, nice and clear. So the main reason why we're, we're able to get this type of clarity, and again, this will be found in any Oakley eyewear itself, is in my humble opinion, three main reasons. One, specifically the geometry and science behind it, the angles at play, okay? The other side to it is the actual material being used. We use a polycarbonate. It is one of the more optically pure available on the market. Fortunately for us, it is our exclusive proprietary blend, so no one else is utilizing it. Um, lastly, it's the manufacturing process. Um, we do all of our lens manufacturing in here, so it's all about quality control. It's our material, it's our manufacturing, it's our production assembly line. We're seeing the process from start to finish and making sure quality is a big part of that. Yeah, you're not outsourcing the, uh, any of no, the lens, lens production. Lens ours, exactly. That's all uh, yeah, inside that's of cool. this facility. So, and again, quality control is a big aspect. So, when you combine two technologies, Plutonite, our lens, and the XYZ Optics, the lens technology, you get HCO high definition optics. Do you have any questions on any of this before we move on and show you impact? No, this is all really, really interesting. And um, it's funny, like a lot of other companies that where I like do factory tours, mm -hmm. a, a, a consistent theme that I've been seeing amongst the higher, you know, the high end manufacturers is owning owning the process from yeah. start to finish mm -hmm. and having that full quality control piece. So yeah. that's uh, we test too. Don't we test? So they're going to, in the actual R&D lab, they do it, I want to say it's, it's every hour, they'll pull a piece or two from every line that's, that's working and operating on a pair of eyewear and they'll bring them over and do these two tests on top of a polarization test if it's a polarized lens. And so you're talking about uh, like straight off of a, of a straight production off of line. line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the glasses are going to customers. And, yep. Yeah. So we manufacture the product here. We're going to make it all here. Okay. They'll go ahead and as they're working on that product, they'll pull a couple pieces from that line. So radar lock, certain colorway, pull two or three pieces in that hour, go do scope and laser check. If it's polarized, we'll pop on a polarized machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we understand that there's going to be a variance within that actual sure. quality side to it. But that quality check allows us to catch issues as they come up instead of catching the issue after it came up and after we made everything. We can then go back in and make corrections. Is it human error? Yeah. Is it mechanical error? Mm -hmm. What caused this problem? Is it here in cutting or is it here in actual injection molding? We can go ahead and figure these things out while we're actually testing them. So once every hour, or I should say every hour, we're going to pull one or two pieces, optics on them, and then see where it's at from there. So cool. you're going to get a chance to see that here shortly. Sweet.